So welcome again in part two, uh, uh, product producers in the long run. Uh, in this portion, uh, we're going to discuss about uh, short run, uh, um, long run and short run average cost curves, uh, especially focus on the long run uh, and see the relationship between the short run average cost uh, curve and the long run average cost curve. Uh, let's start. Uh, So producers in the long run, this is the second part of this topic. Uh, as we already discussed in part one, that uh, in the long run, uh, all the factors of productions are variable. Uh, so, and there is extra lost cost, uh, low cost, uh, least cost method of producing any uh, given level of output. So that's, uh, if this cost is expressed in terms of dollars, uh, per unit of output, we can say that we can get a long run average cost of producing each level of output. So uh, by dividing the number of units, we get an average uh, cost. And uh, in the long run, we can say long run average total cost curves. So the long run average cost, uh, if we plot a curve uh, uh, for uh, long run average cost of producing uh, various levels of output, uh, so we get a curve, which is a saucer shape, or we can see here uh, like, this is the shape of the uh, long run average cost curve. So, uh, so when all factors of production can be varied, uh, that's a long run. So long run is the boundary between cost level that are attainable with known technology, which is a technically efficient way and given factor prices and those are unattainable. So it's a line which we can say that these are the levels of output we can obtain uh, with this input uh, or the combinations of input uh, at the minimum cost. Uh, and above this line, this curve, uh, long run average cost curve, it is unattainable, which we cannot produce uh, with these combinations that much quantity. Uh, since all uh, costs are variable in the long run, so we do not need to distinguish between average variable uh, cost and average fixed cost because in uh, in short run uh, some costs are fixed costs some costs are variable cost but in the long run all costs are variable costs so there is no need to uh, differentiate between these two uh, fixed and variables so we just focus on average total cost long run average total cost so uh, long run average total cost is the boundary between the levels that are attainable with the non technology and given price factors, and those are unattainable. So we see here, uh, as I mentioned, it's a saucer shaped uh, curve, and we call it as a long run average cost curve. And uh, if we look at very carefully, we can see that we can divide this whole uh, saucer shaped long run average cost curve into three uh, distinct uh, or separatable uh, portions. Uh, the first portion is we see here uh, where the average long run average total cost is decreasing, right? It's a downward. And then it's, it's going to be flat. And after that, it starts increasing. It's, it starts increasing. So that's why it's a uh, saucer shape. Now, this portion where the average total cost of uh, long run average total cost curve is downward sloping or long run average cost is decreasing, this portion uh, is called as decreasing cost or in other way, in other way, it's an increasing return because what, what is happening is that when we are adding up more inputs, the output is more than this proportion in which we are adding up inputs. So that's why we call it as a re increasing returns. Uh, the second portion, which is a flat portion, uh, and we call it as a constant cost because the cost is not changing when we are producing uh, further units. And uh, we also call them, in other words, the constant return to scale. So as whatever the uh, unit we are adding as input, the cost of that is equal to what we are producing is equal. So that's, a, that's why we are saying constant returns to scale or cons constant returns. And the third portion in which when we are producing more units, the long run average cost is starts increasing. And this is what we call it as an increasing cost. 
And when the cost is increasing and the output is not matching with that, so it means that it is decreasing return. It is decreasing return. So we can see here that uh, this point, which is reflected by this black dot, uh, is unattainable. This C1 uh, is attainable. Why? Because it's a curve rep representing the uh, or dividing the area into two portions, attainable or unattainable. And uh, we also see that there are three uh, different uh, regions in this uh, graph. Uh, now, the minimum efficient scale is a point here, we see here, where uh, the average, long run average total cost curve is reach up to its minimum. This is the minimum efficient scale. Because at, if we produce this much quantity, that is the quantity which gives us the long run average total cost minimum. After that, if we want to produce more, it's going to stay at the same level, but it's not re reducing first. So this is the minimum output we require to produce in order to get this benefit of a least cost or the minimum cost. Uh, but if you produce further, uh, so the, the cost is not decreasing. So this is the minimum efficient scale. Uh, although this whole, uh, this whole uh, uh, portion of the long run uh, average total cost curve is a uh, efficient scale because here the average long run average uh, total cost is uh, minimum. Uh, but after this point, uh, it starts increasing and that's what we call it as a decreasing returns. Now, any uh, as a as a, uh, a very uh, common intuition, uh, like any business person is uh, wants to operate operate uh, how much uh, the level of output they have to produce. The ideal uh, is that we have to produce uh, within this range of a constant return or a constant cost, because that's a way that where the long run average total cost is at its minimum. Uh, after this point, it is not uh, uh, beneficial for the business to operate because that's a, a point where the cost starts increasing. So we see over the range of output uh, from zero to QM, the firm is enjoying increasing return. And the minimum efficient scale we just discussed is that uh, is the point uh, on the long run average total cost curve where the uh, cost uh, reach up to the minimum level. That's the minimum efficient scale. Or here we, in our graph, it is the QM, the quantity M uh, is the. Uh, now, we see here that uh, these are the uh, areas where the output reflects uh, uh, economies of scale. We also call them as an economies of scale. Why? Because uh, we use this word economies of scale when uh, the, the firms or corporations enjoy uh, the, the least cost because they are producing in large quantity bulk. And we see, uh, we use this term very commonly for China uh, because the China is exporting many products all over the world. And why they are doing this? Because they are enjoying the economies of scale and economies of scale make them possible for China to sell it at a, a low price as compared to any other country. So many economies of scale is the idea where you are reach uh, to the uh, point uh, you produce so in a quantity that you reach up to the point on this, uh, which we call it as a uh, minimum efficient point. Uh, the uh, portion which is upward sloping, like after this point, uh, we see that the uh, long run average cost curve is uh, start rising again. Uh, in that portion, we call it as a diseconomies of scale. Because uh, now if we produce more, furthermore, then we uh, our cost will going to increase. So this is not an ideal point to go there. So the relationship, what is the relationship between uh, the long run average cost and the short run average cost curve is that uh, the short run average cost curve is within the long run average total cost and uh, both the curves are tangent to each other. The Both the curves are tangent to each other like this point you see here Q0. Uh, and no short run average total cost curve is below the uh, long run average total cost. So long run average shows the lowest cost of producing any output when all factors are variable. And in short run, we see that one of the factors is fixed. And in uh, we see that the curves, uh, these are uh, various uh, short run uh, average cost curves. Uh, 
uh, and we see here these uh, curves are tangent to long run average total cost and no or oh, short run curves can fall below the long run uh, cost curve because the long run average cost curve represents the lowest attainable cost of each possible outcome and uh, is a tangent to each other. And we see that they envelop uh, this long run average total cost, envelop all the short run average total cost curves uh, within that range. So we see here uh, this uh, relationship between short run and long run. So what we learn mainly is that uh, that uh, the producers are deciding uh, up till what level they have to produce. Uh, so mostly they prefer to produce in a uh, the uh, the range we call it as economies of scale or uh, increasing return to scale or constant return to scale up till that point. But after that, it is not advisable to produce uh, more. Uh, and, but some industries are uh, operating on a uh, diseconomies of scale because of their own uh, issues and all these uh, things. So, uh, okay, so this is uh, all from this part. And now we're going to uh, cover the third portion of this uh, topic in our third part. So see you in third part.